Hello, everybody. It's Friday night. What's up? <laughs> oh, it's the Skeptical Help Bar. How you doing? Divine Donna's in the house. Yeah, I'm here. She's here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's so nice. We already got people in the chat room. Lots from YouTube. What's up? Let me say hi to a bunch of people. We got, oh, how do you say that first name? I don't know how to say that. I, Ilanka? I see. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's two I's or two L's. Ilanka, maybe? We got Don Nichols. Hey. Uh, we got, who else we got? We got Jade Kitten. We got Kendra. Oh, what is that? Nova Scotia, Canada. Nice. Hey, <laughs> from Canada, eh? <laughs> I bet you hear that a lot and you, you probably get sick of that. <laughs> we got Glenda, Diane, JD Sword, Fantastic Publishing. We got Mike O of SSC. Uh, Ian, John Kennedy, what's up, buddy? Faith, Melissa, lots of Cat Mac. Ta oh, Tanya, Jay. Wow, we got lots of people coming in here. This is awesome. It's nice to see everybody. How's everyone doing? I hope you're doing good. I hope you have you had a good week. We had snow. Yeah, we had snow. We had snow. All, all freaking week. <laughs> all, all week. Last weekend it was kind of nice. Well, last weekend I was in Philly, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was nice down there. Like it was cold here. It was cold, That's but when it started. Yeah. Then uh we then snow. Had snow, 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 and like there's inches out there now, and like we're gonna get four to six tonight. Oh man, Cat Max is still snowing here too. Oh. <laughs> that sucks. Hey Richard. Oh yeah, we can keep our snow. I know. I I don't. I'm not a big snow person. Like I mean, I'm I'm always. Well, well this is gonna sound weird because I'm sitting here in a t-shirt, but I love wearing hoodies all the time. I actually walked over here wearing a hoodie, and I, I, I'm used to that. Like I like cool weather, um, where I can wear a hoodie. But not cold weather. No, not cold weather. It's just cold here. You know, I want to wear just a hoodie so I don't look as chubby. <laughs> <laughs> like I can cover the belly, you know. You don't but have as many layers. then, yeah, then it starts snowing, and it's like uh, Arctic temperatures and it's like oh i gotta put a hoodie on and then i gotta put this big coat on and i gotta put a hat on and a scarf and then i'm just big again <laughs> uh, fluffy not chubby <laughs> thanks john i appreciate that oh man start wearing jerseys like kevin smith oh you know what i i don't i have a superman jersey I don't I don't do sports jerseys. I don't really do them. I have the Superman one because I thought it was cool. It was cool colors. And then I got a whole bunch of cast members um, from various like I got Dean Kane to autograph it. Um, I got uh, a couple Lois Lanes. I got uh, Noel Neal, um, the original. Oh, oh, I think she was actually the second. There was one before her, but yeah. um, she was one of the original Lois Lanes on TV. Um, but there you go. So tonight. My gosh, we, we jumped in and it's like, we're almost five minutes in. I didn't even go over the rules yet. Yeah. I know. So many, so many people coming in. I, I love seeing everyone. Daniel, Let's, Reed's in the house. Daniel Reed, what's up, buddy? I got to talk Tim to you. Vickers. Tim Vickers, too. Coffee. Tim and Daniel, I, I might have something for us to do in the future. Um, so I'll talk to you guys later. But anyway, the rules. Richard, the rules. Uh, rule number one is that you are welcome to ask questions. That's what this show is about, uh, especially tonight because it's open mic night. Uh, and that's that's it, it's up to you. If you guys ask questions, we keep the show going at least for two hours because it's anything over. Donna gets like, yeah, I'm she gets hangry kind of thing. <laughs> um, so rule number two, peace, uh, is that I, I don't know everything. That's that's plain and simple. Just being honest, I don't know everything. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything. Depends on how much I drink. Uh, but no, I mean, I might say I don't know. And that would be just being totally honest. And I'll look it up. We might share screens. We might learn something new together. That'll be great. Rule number three is that we practice the Patrick Swayze rule here. And that means be nice. Say that again real quick. The Patrick Swayze rule here. I was running yeah, out of breath. You have to say the whole thing. We practice the, the Patrick Swayze rule here. Okay. What's wrong? What did I no, do? I just wanted you to try it again. Stop freaking with me. <laughs> I'm 
trying not to drop f bombs. I'm just trying. It's not going to last. But <laughs> I can guarantee that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we try to be nice here. Uh, I might vent some frustrations, but if you're in the chat room and you're having a discussion or whatever conversation, just be nice. Don't devolve into name calling um, because if you get mean and, and name calling, Donna will boot your ass out of the chat room forever. Mm. Dramatic pause. And rule number four is that when you have a question for tonight, please do us a favor, put a cue in front of it. That helps Donna pick them out from the rest of the conversation going on. And then I can address them as they come in. And rule number five is my favorite. Drink up. Everyone like my cup? I love it. That was a present from Dr. Jim. Mm. So let me go back. Mm. Let me put that up. Oh, look at that. I got science for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Crove Judas is in the house. Oh, man. Did did you uh, did, did any new videos, Crow of Judas? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I won't say anything else. Um, <laughs> John Kennedy with a big F-bomb. That's nice. Uh, no F-bombs by... Oh, Shauna. Shauna. Jaya. Jaya? Am I saying that right? Jaya D? No, Julie. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call you Julie because that's, that's Julie. Julie Agulia. Julia. Julie. Julie. No, she's Julie. Yeah. Julie. 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 Yeah. Wrong one. <laughs> wrong one? Yeah. No. You like that though? Was that good? Did I do that good? Well, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to play on it. <laughs> I'm just having fun. I'm not making fun of you. Uh, uh, Julie, I'm, I'm just having fun. Let's see. We got a lot of people. Everybody's in the house. That's nice. All right, we got. I see we got a couple questions coming in. That's good. Oh, show off your new Ghostbusters trap. <gasps> okay. <laughs> here we go. All right. Tonight. So I got two. I got two. I'll show you this, the other one. So this is the first one I got. This is from the Regal Theaters. And this was, I don't know how much it was. They were expensive. They were really expensive. I got the toys like the uh the actual toys um i got two of them one with a pedal one without and i think they were cheaper than this but then again i think i got them at yard sales so oh, they maybe. would be cheaper but anyway so this one um it's got a light back here right there um and then the the, the top here of display you probably won't see it let me turn the light out so you may be able to see it better um so when i open it up uh, that's it there's no noise that lights up, but it doesn't have a bar that goes across. And then there's a light back there, that red one. Um, that lights up. So it's it's okay. Um, it was nice. I like that the, the doors open up um, and it has a good look. The handle is pretty firm. But the rest of it, like it's, it's squishy uh, when I pick it up. So I'm not really happy with the quality of this. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a trap. I like it. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. This one, however, this one is really cool. I like this. This was the AMC version. Um, it didn't come with Winston. It didn't come with Winston. This is Winston. But it came with this bucket. It's purple. And again, I'll turn out the light here. So you might be able to see. I'll turn this one out too. So it gets really dark. But you turn it on. No noise. But that that lights up, which is kind of a cool effect. Um, it's probably better in the dark. I think I'm going to adjust it, though. I'm going to see if I can do more with it. Um, but it's actually much better quality. This is so much sturdier. This is, like, solid. I can pick this up and not worry about it breaking it. Either, right? But no, this one doesn't make it. Well, I mean, the toys... Uh, well, actually, I think the one toy does make noise. Um, yeah. So, but it's it's nice. It's beefier. It's definitely a better quality plastic. Um, and I, I do like it. I like the bucket a lot. And then of course, our resident ghost Winston fits good and right in the trap. So there you go. I'll turn him around so we can on screen as he's getting sucked into the trap. So there you go. And that was good. That, that was, um, put a battery powered nebulizer in it, add water and smoke. There you go. That, that actually would be cool. Um, I want to put more lights in it so it, it glows better. Mm. Uh, but 
Huh? Um. Oh, put a battery. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh oh. You stuck over there? there it's frozen. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I did that. Ghostbusters released uh, last night. Please, if you saw it already, do not put any spoilers in the comments because I will boot you because I'm going to go see it tomorrow. I've seen some of the reviews, which I haven't read all of them. And I know I, critics don't like it, but, you know, nerds I don't give <laughs> Nerds, <laughs> hopefully nerds will. I don't know. Um, it's back and forth. I want to see it on my own and and just, you know, enjoy it if i can and go from there i'll let you know next week if i if i liked it or not um oh so i got uh yeah i got this too so i got my official cup and it has the removable top and it's supposed to be three others but they wouldn't give them to me i tried i tried to buy them but they said no they couldn't sell them to me uh separately which is bullshit um oh because that's the one that came in there in the package deal. Well, it came... No, it was like you just get... They, they said you only get one top per cup. Oh. And he couldn't sell me. He said there was no way to sell them. And I'm, I think that's bullshit. Because I've seen other people post pictures of, of all four of those toppers. And it was like Slimer and a mini marshmallow guy and something else. Um, but, oh well. And then I got the metal bucket that's over there. Uh, it's on top, yeah. I got that. It was expensive stuff. Um, oh, it's behind me. It's actually behind me on there. Yeah. But I got the bucket too. So it's a cool bucket. It's a cool bucket. It's metal. I like that. It's like a trash can. Yeah, it's good for a trash can. A little Perfect. deep under and and then uh there's the stay puff, the mini stay puff. It's a it's a bottle. It's a drink drink holder. So not too bad. Not too bad. Um so let's see. We got the critics just complained. Yeah, Draco, I, I, I agree. I mean, most of the time, the critics, every time I've enjoyed a movie, the critics, the professional critics have hated it. So, I mean, I, I don't ever go by them. I don't ever go by uh, the, the critics because it's just ridiculous. Um, let's see, Kenny is a big baller at, at CFI. What? <laughs> Uh, they love me here. <laughs> I have the best toys in the, in the entire building. <laughs> All right. So tonight is open mic night, as it says up here. Uh, so if you want to post a question, that's cool. I will go as far as to, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this. Where am I going? Let me, let me, uh, get a link here <clears throat> to post in the chat room. And if you guys, if somebody wants to come on and ask a question, uh, you know, in person, uh, virtual face to virtual face, then you may do so. Um, come on, or if you have a certain comment that you want to make, uh, a discussion topic for a few minutes, you can come on. I just put the link in the chat room. So there you go. Uh, so we can take some questions. Um, we'll at least get started. So we got any? Mm -hmm. The yummy donut. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Just watched your Snedeker vid on CFI. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for for enjoying it. And and thank you for bringing it up because that leads me into being able to talk about it just a little bit. Um, so the basis of the video. So I posted a new video on the CFI YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched it yet, please, after the show, go over and watch it. Or you know, go over it, save it in your, your favorites, and then watch it tomorrow. But basically, I went back on the uh, Snedeker case from 1988 and looked at it because there was some footage that Ed Warren had taken with a VHS style video camera. And it was about a table and chairs moving by themselves. And it also featured a, a, a young girl that was sitting on a chair that was allegedly being rocked back like like this. Um, while she was sitting in it with her mother standing behind her. And to be honest, like I, I, I saw that footage years ago and it actually inspired me to uh, write my first uh, self-published book um, called Orbs or Dust. And like I wrote it, wrote the majority of it in a weekend because I saw this video and it really pissed me off because I, I saw it. I'm like, it's obvious that he's pulling string. He's got something on the chairs 
in the table because they're all moving towards him, um, like exactly towards him with no deviation. Everything's just coming towards him. Like he's, he's doing this. And I actually called it in my book. I called it the point of pull because you can see like, um, let me see, let me get something here. Uh, I need something square. So I will, I will use, what do I use? I don't even have any. So if I, I'll use this. I'll use the trap. So basically, if this is sitting across the room and you tie, say, a fishing line to this, um, this handle here, this trap is not going to slide this way. It's going to slide that way. It's going to turn, um, which is the point of pull because you're pulling it. And then once that gets to uh, a straight line with the line that you're pulling, it's going to go like that. Um, and, and I pointed this out. I explained the whole thing and it was fun. So I wrote about it and I couldn't use the pictures because it was, you know, obviously copyrighted, but um, it came up again because I've seen so much shit lately with the uh, um, <laughs> like your exercise with the cat in the doors. Yes, John. Yeah. Just like that. Um, but yeah, I've been seeing a lot with the Warrens coming back up. Uh, people are, are commenting about the Warrens and how how they were an inspiration and they did this and did that. And I, I personally think they were con artists. Um, and I think they took advantage of people and, and I really can't stand that. So I wanted to write about it. I wanted to do something with this uh, footage. And instead I'd started filming a video because I was like, you know, this is what I do. I can recreate this shit. So I might as well do it. And that led into me uh, researching the, the case itself, the Snedeker case. Uh, and I found a few things, discrepancies, you know, like the family, uh, the one, the, the one niece, actually saying something like she was uh, uh, sexually uh, assaulted by this entity. And then only to find out in the book that the the child, the one child, the, the one that was um, sick, uh, confessed to being inappropriate with his family. Um, so, yeah, like he was he had some issues and I mean, he was the problem. But then at the end, there's a big. There's a big accusation that Lorraine made against the family and the family that used to own the funeral home. So if you don't know, the Snedekers lived in Connecticut and they had purchased a house or they were renting a house um, that used to be a funeral home. And that funeral home, home had been in business for over 50 years. And the family that owned it, it was a family business. And Lorraine made this accusation that. There was necrophilia going on at the time that it was a funeral home. And like that really just fucking pissed me off. There's my F-bomb. <laughs> it just, it, it was just a throwaway comment with, with, without any care of consequences, you know, like what damage she could do to, to a family's reputation. Uh, horrible. And this came in a book that was, was available worldwide, you know, so everyone is reading this. Everyone's getting this this reading this accusation and getting this impression that this family must have done it because you know all these people that love the warrens just think they can't do any wrong and it's just total fucking bullshit oh my god i'm getting pissed off wow <sighs> you're right <laughs> have a drink it really makes me angry <laughs> oh drink <laughs> energy drink everybody drink <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I was very upset with that. And, and in researching like all the, uh, all the websites and other books that have written about this, nobody mentions this, like nobody, nobody digs into what might've happened to the family, you know, or, or what they would have to deal with because of this accusation. And it just really angered me. So yeah, at the end of the video, I do go on a rant. Um, a good few minutes and my boss actually loved it. <laughs> he got done and he like stopped by my office <laughs> and get nice. Um, and he's like, Hey man, I love a good Warren rant. <laughs> he's like an that bit at the end. That was good. <laughs> that was good. So yeah. Yeah. I, I really, it, it, and I say this in the video, like if you guys, if anyone thinks that the Warrens were respectable, investigators that deserve respect and, and this and that, I think there's something you're not doing your homework. I'm going to say that plain, 
plain and simple. You're not doing your homework because I don't think you're you understand exactly what kind of people they were um, to make that. Uh, it's just the shit that they did to people, to families is horrible. So, all right, off my pedestal. Well, um, a question for Katie. Okay. Julie. Hi, Julie. She got a nice pit. Look at it. Like the, the, I, the profile picture is so nice. She's like so happy. <laughs> uh, do you think the Warrens are the ones that inspired the start of fakers with the demonic claims, activity, etc.? I don't think they're the ones that really started it uh, because you had like the Amityville was going that that was a separate thing um, from them. They just kind of piggybacked onto it. Uh, and then you had like the Doris Byther case, which is also known as the entity case. Um, that's the name of the movie that and the book that came out uh, about the story. And that was supposed to be like demonic or three demons that were that were constantly harassing and, and assaulting the family, mostly Doris. Um, but I think they, I, I think you're on to something though. I think they, uh, I don't think they started it, but I think they helped it along. I, I really do. Cause they just, they came in like the experts and we see actually, I mean, you're probably more right than I'm giving you credit for because we see the same kind of attitude. We see people coming in claiming that they are demonologists and coming in with this like really uh, like, like, like strong, confident sense of authority uh, saying, hey, yeah, I'm a demonologist. I know what I'm doing. I deal with demonic cases and stuff. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I really don't think you are. You know, like I, re I really don't think you are. I, I think you're just dealing with what you think is a ghost hunt and and calling it demonic because it sounds sexier. You know, it sounds more dangerous and, you know, it, it gives you this false sense of like people think I'm, I'm more special because I'm doing demonic cases. Um, but when it comes to the Warrens, yeah, I mean, they probably did help it along and maybe they did inspire uh, this long line of, of fakers that that go in with the demonic because they were I mean, when you look at the history, when you look at the, the, the their beginnings, they were ghost hunters you know they everything was a ghost and then when the amityville horror came out then it switched to demons because that was that was all the rage so uh so you might be right you might be right um i might be wrong on this um it, it's it's the very you possible talk about it, you're talking the more yeah i'm talking myself out of it because I'm, I'm reasoning and this is this is why i like doing this this is why i like having conversations because you know like i really don't think about that and my initial impression doesn't sit well with me. So that's why I'm talking it out. Cause I'm like, uh, is it, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe. Nope. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I think you might be right. <laughs> so good one, Julie. I, I think that was a good, good question. A uh, really good question. All right. What else we got? Hmm. JD sword. When examining videos like the Snedeker case or on TikTok, what do you look for? You have certain telltale signs. Well, oh, this is good. This is good. This could get into a lot. Um, so it depends on the video, of course. Like with the Snedeker case, I was that was a deep dive. I have a file um, in my file cabinet that's about that thick. So about an inch and a half to two inches thick um, of just papers, um, documents, stories, newspaper clippings, um, the files that we have here because we have an archive. Um, of cases from the 70s on up. So I went through them and made copies. Um, I actually tapped Joe Nickel uh, when he came up here once because I knew he had a file on it because he investigated. He actually went out there. He was never in the, the Snedeker's house, but he was. He actually stayed with a neighbor across the street um, while he was investigating the case. So I had a look at his files. Um, so I'm going through and, and with this kind of thing, it you might some people might think it's overdone like i overdo it because i want to familiar familiarize myself with the case so that i can talk about it without constantly going back to to notes um and when you do that you start picking out details like a, a detail about um like the cell that the family was on the sally jesse raphael show uh like three days before the book was released 
Um, so the family was on there, the Seneca family was on there, and they're talking about this case. And Ed and Lorraine Warren was on there, and also Joe Nichols was on there. They put Joe right next to uh, uh, Ed. And if you've never seen this, like Google that. Go on YouTube and look for Snedeker's and uh, uh, Sally Jesse Raphael because it's funny. What? Because because they go to Joe and Joe starts like, no, there's no evidence, and Ed like loses his shit <laughs> and gets in like his face with his hand and stuff. I give Joe props because I would have fucked. I would have took an elbow right to his neck um, if he did that to me. Uh, but anyway, where was I? I totally lost my train of thought. Um, so with the Snedekers, yeah. With that, I, I like to dive in because the, then I picked up details. Um, like the uh, the niece that made one claim about being sexually assaulted, uh, assaulted, not exhausted, um, sexually assaulted, and then uh, blaming it on the entity, like literally saying it was, it was a demon that did this. Um, and then three days later, the book came out and... There's the the confession that it was the son. The son was actually doing it. Um, so that like that blew her story out of the water. Um, and so you pick up details like that. So I like doing an intense deep deep dive. But when it comes to TikTok, um, a lot of those videos are recreations. So like the Snedeker case, I did a recreation, which was basically just study the video. How can this be done? Look at the mo movements and try to mimic this to show that it can be done, uh, especially with somebody standing off camera. It's, it's really easy to do. Uh, and I even had, I don't have it. It's, it's actually up on a shelf now, but I, I had a 1988 VHS VHS camera that I filmed this on. So that was really cool. I really liked that. Um, but with TikTok videos, it's usually a recreation and then showing you behind the scenes. So people claim that they have some kind of poltergeist activity and they show you like, uh, kitchen or bathroom door or drawers opening and closing, um, cabinet doors opening and closing, uh, regular door open and closing, or things moving across like table, chairs, all kinds of stuff. And I usually study that to figure out like where where are, are the lines tied or where could somebody be hiding that pushes it? Because um, some sometimes like one one video, it was um there was a a regular like desk chair um, not like a, a chair on wheels but like an older like dining room chair kind of thing with four legs, um, and it slides across the the floor and then does a a turn like a whole three sixty and then goes back, but the camera angle is from like the seat up you don't see the legs so with that when I recreated it I literally just laid on the floor and and put my arms up like this behind me because I'm laying on the floor and then move the chair out and just turned it around and put it back in. And you can't, couldn't see me at all, but I replicated that footage. Um, but other times, yeah, it's, it's trying to figure out where the lines are um, or where the people are. If there could be a, an assistant, if, if it's possible to do it by yourself um, with, or, or, you know, do you really need help? Or like the one video that I'm really proud of, um, Dono's with me. And it was a, there was an argument between me and another TikToker that was creating fake content, like totally fake content. But um, he kept saying, look, I'm looking around the room and he would only give you like three quarters of the room or half the room. And I kept saying, you know, like you really should do a 360 spin. And I'm, I'm convinced that the guy doesn't know what 360 means. So I showed him and literally like had the phone up on the, the wide angle lens looking at me just on the bottom and went all the way around the room like completely around the room and then come back to the beginning and donna's right next to me but you don't see her the entire time so i show you everything but you don't see her and it was really cool it was a cool trick because mm -hmm. we only did it, it it only took like all of like five seconds to spin around the room and you don't see her at all and then boom Divine Donna just appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it was like magic. <laughs> really, really cool. Mm. But there's other signs. I mean, you just have to look at details. It's knowing what to look for. And that comes with the experience. Uh, honestly, like looking for things, looking for uh, uh, things that don't match up, comparing scene to scene. Um, if somebody's using a piece of equipment, you want to make sure you're looking at 
everything that they're doing. The switch. There was one um, one thing I did with the uh, what was it? Um, uh, Zach Baggins did uh, the Demon House when he did that that mockumentary that he did at the Demon House. Um, he kept saying that the readings on his uh, trifuel meter were spiking and like they're getting all the way up and they're only happening like right at him, you know, because of course everything's about Zach. Um, but it only happened when they put the meter like right up to like his, his, the front of him here. And I, I took a screen cap of the, the, the scene and realized that they had the device on the wrong setting. They had it on the, like the one to three scale instead of the one to 100 scale. So it made it look like it was spiking it, um, which because of the scale that was on, yeah, it was spiking it, but it was only like a really tiny, tiny, tiny reading, uh, not anywhere near what they uh, were trying to make it sound like. So like little details like that, you really have to look at every little detail, every scene, every, every device that they're using and pay attention to what they're saying. And, uh, I mean, there's a, there's, um, this is a really good question. I like this. Uh, there was a, a news crew that came out, uh, like two weeks ago or something. Um, and we sat and we did an interview here about pet psychics and it was so much fun. They were, they were really good. They were from, uh, it was, a uh, the CBC, um, news came out. We sat and talked and we were going over like cold reading and hot reading and how it applies to people that pretend to talk to animals. Um, and I had examples for them. So one of the examples was like this famous uh, pet psychic that was on a talk show. It was um, uh, whoever took over for Regis and Kathy Lee, like the two new people that do it. I don't even know who they are because and- it's Kelly and something else. Because th- I think the guy always changes now. Yeah, uh, but Mark. there was two people on there. And no, it was um, the guy that used to do American Idol uh seacrest ryan seacrest so it was kelly and ryan and here comes this this guy and he brings out this miniature horse (laughs) with sneakers (laughs) the horse was wearing sneakers which was funny in itself um but he brings the the horse out and talking and and the psyche's like oh what's you know what's going on here And, and the sneakers and all that and uh, he's he, the guy says something and she's like, oh, well, I'll tell you what the horse is thinking. She doesn't like these sneakers at all. And the guy that owns the horse didn't look like he heard her, but he responded going, oh, yeah, she loves them. And the psychic immediately turned around and said, oh, yeah, she does love them. She loves them a lot. She loves wearing them all the time. And I pointed it out to the reporters like she just she just totally flip flopped here. Um, so that's the kind of thing that you have to look out for. And, and I, I found that because I was listening really close. And once I thought I heard something, I went and replayed it over and over again to make sure I knew what I heard, um, and that I could write the transcript and, and all that. So really, really detail oriented. So good question. That was a good question, JD. Really good. Mm -mm -mm. I love it. Hope you guys are having fun tonight or at least learning something or entertained which ghostbusters is your favorite the original i mean honestly it it, the original is just so good um it's so good i mean it's 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 just good that's it i love it um i mean the the second one was corny -er. (laughs) but i i still watch it you know it's not my favorite but i still like it um the the what 2016 one I thought was horrible. It was just the, the story sucked. Um, the characters were underdeveloped, and and too much shit went. It was just bad. Um, and I didn't like the uh, the cameos because they just it just sucked. Uh, yeah, Daniel. Um, Afterlife I did enjoy. I thought it was a nice throwback. Um, maybe a little bit too much of a throwback, but the ending. When when uh, Harold Ramis uh, ghost, you know, like that was that brought a tear to my eye. I I tear up and I still tear up. I still watch that shit. I'm like, all right. I tr- I try to get like deeper in my couch, you know, so I'm like nobody sees me. <laughs> like, oh my god, uh, ego. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the original is definitely my favorite. Mm-hmm. Good question. 
what else we got? Amy. Hello, Amy. What's that? I'm looking at the icon. Looks like somebody in jail. Hmm. Um, so what started you into the skeptical world? Candy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, so I've always loved the, all the, the, the paranormal stuff. I've always loved it. And, and this is something I've talked about before, but there is, I did put a, a an article out about this um, a little bit ago where I talk about an experience in Gettysburg that I had where I was mistaken as a ghost. And that really changed my way of thinking because the people that claimed I was a ghost was claiming it to like a whole conference full of people. And I really tried to convince them otherwise, and they just refused to listen. Um, refused to look at anything. Uh, so that really got me interested in the skeptical literature. I found Skeptical Inquirer, which I now work for, um, and found like the people like Ben Radford and Joe Nickel and other people, Sharon Hill, um, lots of other people that I started interacting with and, and learning from. And the more I learned from them, the more I realized I was doing everything wrong. Like everything I did was wrong. And it... Somehow it sparked my curiosity for learning because like, if you looked at me in high school, I, I didn't do shit. <laughs> I was horrible. My grades were horrible. Um, and, and now it's like, I can't get enough. I love to read. I love to learn. I love to experiment. I love to look to, to try to figure out new things. So I think the skeptical side really, um, really, really had everything that I wanted. Um, to do. It, it gave me uh, a way to search for the truth, um, not necessarily to debunk everything. It, it's showing me ways to get to the truth and, and filter out all the bullshit around it. So it really has given me everything that I, I, I'm looking for. And uh, I just love it. I love being a part of it. I love the people um, on both sides, like, you know, skeptics, believers, people in between. I, I get along with almost everybody. Not everybody, though. <laughs> some people, some people just mean. Oh, <laughs> they're just mean, mean people. I don't know. <laughs> but hopefully that answered your question. Um, that was like a condensed version uh, because it's, it's a much longer story. But again, like if you go on, I, I should really do that. Um, if, if anyone, yeah, I'm going to find my origin story so that I can pop it in there and if anyone is interested, then they can uh, uh, check it out, read up on it, learn a little bit more about why I'm doing what I'm doing, and uh, we'll go from there. Let me see. Where is it? Two, no. <clears throat> wow. I got a lot of stuff on here. <laughs> I look back at some of these things, and I'm like, wow. I, I That was a fun one. <laughs> that was a fun investigation. That was another. Oh, there it is. Ghost Hunter to Chief Investigator. That was a good time. So I'm going to take this link, <clears throat> pop it in the chat, paste. There we go. So that should be coming your way soon. If you want to check it out, uh, that would be great. And uh, yeah, like I said, you get to learn a little bit more about my background. All right. What else we got? <clears throat> Doing good. Red Man. What's up, buddy? Kenny, have you done anything that goes over a lot of the not so nice behavior concerning the Warrens over their careers? Um, so, I mean, I, I, I do touch on, on, on the latest video. Uh, I go into that a little bit um, with the accusation and I go through the timeline. Um, and I also uh, I show a lot of documents. And this is what I, I I love this video, this latest video so much because it's just I had so much documentation to put up. I had, uh, papers from court cases, um, records and newspapers from, from people interviewing the, the people involved, but the court cases were really fun, uh, to read, especially the one it's like 500 pages. And I went through all 500 pages, <laughs> which helps when you have this job, because I can sit here and actually read it. I can spend a day and go through it. Um, but I mean, it, it shows that, they made comments, they made uh, statements, they made promises, and they never delivered. Um, and that they, uh, several authors um, from, from I think, Gerald Brittle, Brittle um, 
and then uh, a couple of the other authors. I, let me hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta make sure I get these names right. So yeah, Gerald uh, Brittle, and then uh, Ray Garten. Uh, Ray Garten actually made a public statement saying that he, when he wrote uh, the book that was associated with the Snedeker case, um, that the the family stories were not adding up, and that he went to the Warrens and told them his problem, and the Warrens told him to make it up. Uh, first, he told them that this family was crazy. Um, because anyone that came to them were crazy and uh, that just, you know, make it up because he was a horror writer. So make everything up. Take what you can and and make the rest up. So, uh, but Gerald, yeah, Gerald Brittle, Brittle I keep saying, I keep wanting to say Biddle, um, Brittle, uh, he wrote, yeah, The Devil, Devil in Connecticut, and he wrote this one. Um, he sued, he sued the Warrens and Warner Brothers and all that because of, uh, the Warrens had made a deal with him for exclusive rights to all their cases. Um, and apparently somebody forgot about that deal when uh, the Warner brothers came to knock on their door and say, Hey, we want to make the conjuring movie. Um, and uh, Lorraine signed a different deal with them. So it was settled out of court. So I don't know what went down after that, but that was the 500 page, uh, uh, court document that i was reading through it was really interesting um lots of stuff in there and uh it, it i mean if you like that kind of stuff i i enjoyed it because i love to read all the like the ins and outs of the behind the scenes things uh beside behind the scenes issues and experiences so i mean i don't re recommend it for a light you know going to bed reading because <laughs> it's definitely not for that all right. What else we got? We're 43 minutes. Wow. This is good. I'm having fun. Bob's in. Damn it, Bob. He had he told me he had company. <laughs> mm. Oh, well, I hope they have a good time. She has a good time. That's great. Checking the side. Say hi. How are you feeling from the eight mile walk? I feel good. No thanks to you. <laughs> no. Um I, I really didn't feel as sore as I thought. I was sore that night because I, I got back back to the house and uh, back to my parents' house where I was staying. And like I sat down and I was like, Ugh. and then another buddy called and uh, we got together for a couple beers. And I mean, I was complaining, except, you know, the beer helped. But then I, I after that, I was still sore. And I got back and that was it. Like I, I actually laid on the floor and I could not get up. <laughs> but by the, the next morning, I was fine. It, it, not, a, not a big deal. Um, and uh, it was good, though. It, it, I wanted to get out walking more, but then all this snow dumped on us. And uh, I was like, ah, it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, the, it was cold. This yeah. Yeah. So I had to get my steps in and out. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, walking around. Donna's been walking around the house, like doing yeah, laps around the dining room, <laughs> dining room and candy. kitchen. So <laughs> it was good seeing you, though, Bob. It was nice to hang out. We, uh, we hung out and went hiking through the, those trails at the park and had some really good conversation. I like that. Yeah. Catching up like that. That was really nice. Hmm. Hey, Boo Productions. I see you out there. Sorta, what? Sorta Rican? <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Sorta Rican. Uh, ho hola, and I don't know how to say that. Wepa? I don't know what that means. Um, you gloriously skeptical bastard. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, from New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, what is your opinion of Hans Holzer? Uh, so I, I don't, I, I have, I have some of his books up on the shelf. I mean, you can see right there. That's, that's the big one. The, the ghosts, the, like the, the three inch thick, uh, book. Um, and I've read through it. Uh, I, I view him as more of a ghost hunter 
and not a a like serious investigator. Um, and that's just from what I read. I haven't read all of his work. I, I have it here for reference. Um, and I have uh, at least two more of his books, I think, um, that I've only paged through because it just wasn't it wasn't holding my interest. It, it was uh, I try to read them and just got bored. Uh, so I don't really read too much of him. And from what I did read, I mean, it's, it's the benefit of the doubt to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like a lot of it is summarized, especially in the, the ghosts book there. Um, it's, it's condensed, it's summarized. So there's not a lot of detail. So I don't know if there was more detail to a lot of these, but, um, yeah, I, I can't give you too much of an opinion because it's not a well-informed opinion and I don't want to speak out of turn. So I apologize. Um, maybe I'll get back to read a little bit so that I can, uh, you know what? I'm going to write that down. Oops. I pulled something out. <laughs> Hopefully this wasn't something important because <laughs> that would suck. Uh, read up on more. Read up on Holzer. To give opinion. What's up? Wasn't Hans Holzer involved in the Amityville case as well? Not to my knowledge. Um, I don't. I don't recall that. Uh, he might have commented on it, but I don't think he was involved in it. Um, because I know the the well the the investigation it's not even an investigation it was more like an overnight ghost hunt um that was done where the warrens were there um they weren't the only ones there i know it was it was arranged by a news crew um and there were several people there i don't remember reading hans holzer's name being involved in that um ronnie defeo talks about him being involved huh I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe when you look it up. You yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll check into that. I want to write that down too. With a involved in Amityville. So, cause I don't remember any of the literature that I came across and it may be something else. It might've been, they, they, uh, you know, reached out to him for, for comment or something like that, but I don't remember seeing his name anywhere, um, in any of the stuff that I've read about it. So, but that that's intriguing. Intriguing now. Involved in the enemy bill case with a question mark. All right. So you're on the list. We'll see what happens. You're on, you're on the list. If, and if I have a show next week, do I have a show? Next, can I do a show next week? My uh, schedule's getting pretty tight. Yes, I can. I'm good. So that'll be. I'll do my segment of uh, what I learned last week <laughs> segment and that'll be the beginning of it so unless i unless i can uh, arrange to have a guest on because i am looking at a few people trying to get uh, a few guests on so it's not just me talking um shauna shauna he wrote two books about it murder in amityville and the amityville curse all right so maybe he he wrote about it and, and well obviously he wrote about it but I don't know if he was actually in like involved in, in investing. I mean, I, did you read the book, Shauna? Uh, do you know if he uh, was actually at the house? Cause maybe I just overlooked it. DeFeo gave me an interview from prison and tells a crazy story. It's a long interview. Yeah. Uh, um, I know that he talked to a few people. I know that he, yeah, uh, because the I know the lawyer. I remember the lawyer going, trying to jump on the uh, possessed uh, angle. No, I just googled it quickly. Okay, no problem. I'll take a look because I think I do have. Do I have that? How many bill curse? I'm gonna have to look that up. Let's look it up. Let's look it up together, um, and find out what's going on. Let's let's see what you guys can see with me. Um, so new tab, we're going to do this together. There we are. Open mic night. Let's take that off. Nah, it's not in the way. So what's the name? Let's see. 
The name is, he wrote two books, the Amity, Murder in Amity, Amityville. I can't even say that name. Murder in Amityville. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Amityville. Let's see. Wikipedia, Murder in Amity. Hans Holzer. What's it say about it? Uh, <laughs> I've seen that cover. That cover? Yeah. You sure? Uh -huh. Oh, down in the library? Maybe. Maybe. Does it have a... Oh. It doesn't have a description. Let's see. Oh, wait, wait. It's the... Uh, blah, 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 blah. The Amityville Horror Book. Oh, wait. Among his famous subjects was the Long Island house that inspired the Amityville Horror Book and film adaptations. Halzer studied at the University of Vienna, Austria, and at Columbia University. One of his famous subjects was the Long Island. All right, so like by this, right? Oh, you guys can't see it. Probably it's too small. Let me blow it up. Um, according to this, it says among his famous subjects was the Long Long Island house that inspired the Amityville Horror Book. So to me, I'm going to interpret that as it's a subject of interest and he probably researched it and wrote a book, but it doesn't sound like he actually investigated that one. Um, so let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Um, Hans Holder, Holzer. Let's see what else comes up. Popular real hauntings. Oh, I, I have that. Yeah. Oh, I have that one. I have that one. Um, all right. You're right. Maybe I'll uh, just write it, write it in here. Murder in Amityville, or stop, curse. Yeah, I'm gonna curse. Curse. There we go. IMDb. Um, IMDb. Is this a, a movie? Let's see. Let me uh, fix this. The Amityville book. Ah, there we go. Curse. Fact or fiction. All right. Amityville, fact or fiction. Secret. Amityville, 400. So, again, no description. What the hell? Nope. Just says, just says that. So, I don't know. Um, let me see. Stop sharing. So, yeah, it looks like it was just a uh, like a subject that he was fond of. Um, and again, I'm just going by this. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to research this a little bit more. But again, like I don't recall him being in the literature of any investigation of the house itself. Um, but maybe he did research it and then write what he, he came across. So I'm going to go with that for now until I look into it more and get a little bit more information um, because I, I just don't know. But good. I like that. DeFeo claimed the mafia told Hans to back off. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, the mafia. <laughs> yeah, the mafia said back off. Uh, don't investigate the house. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, Beth. Uh, Daniel Hyden crew. All right. Um, yeah, we got one more question. Yeah, and then we'll go to break. Kendra. I hope I'm saying that right. Right, Kendra? That looks like a Kendra, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to be involved with CFI cloud moving type of investigation? Again. Oh, okay. Men involved again. Oh, okay. So um I don't know yet. Uh so that was the I was I just happened to be in the right place. Um because we were in Las Vegas for PsyCon, which is our, our big science conference in Vegas. And I happened to be out there and the applicant for that test lives in Vegas. So Jim Underdown, who is the director, uh, he, him and um, oh, I think, I think his name's John, the guy that actually scheduled the test with CFI IG. Um, they said, yeah, we're going to be in Vegas anyway. So you don't have to come to Los Angeles because that's usually where, People have to go. They have to go to L.A., the headquarters in L.A., in order to conduct the test. But since everyone was going to be in Vegas, they said, yeah. Um, so 
because it's usually in LA, I don't get to participate in those tests. Um, so hopefully if we have another one, another applicant that is available in Vegas, or if that same lady decides to try again, because we told her or Jim told her that she could reapply uh, in a year and that we would be back in October, which we will be back and, uh, she can try again. So, uh, I don't know if she comes out again, we'll see. I mean, I was, I, I honestly didn't believe that she was going to come out, you know, when I heard the story and I don't want to sound mean. Um, but like that, that takes balls to say that you can move clouds around the sky and then show up to a bunch of strangers and, and go through with like trying to do it like that. That's, that's fascinating to me, honestly. So I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that we can. I'm hoping that uh, another test is is scheduled or something. I'll, I'll find out because I do have to talk to Jim um, this week. We got to work out stuff because we're doing another workshop together, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I can give you a heads up. Like I'm, I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, so we're going to do a workshop, an hour and a half workshop called "The Tricks of the Tricksters." And at least on my part, I'm going to start showing like behind the scenes of how to do some videos um, like poltergeist videos and ghost videos and stuff like that, that are mainly featured on TikTok. Hopefully it won't be banned uh, yet, <laughs> but, and I'll still be able to be like, well, you know, like we still got TikTok, so it's still relevant. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see. So with that, I think we got a couple questions left, but why don't we go to break and um, we'll come back. So with that, I'm going to let me queue up the break video. Hey, break video, the pee break video. It says pee break video. <laughs> Love that. All right. So we will be back in four minutes, just over four months. Ah, what's wrong with my mouth? I got to do exercises. We will be back in about four minutes and we'll continue with the questions. And if you have any more, there's time to put them in there. But uh, for now, see you in four minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Help you. Hope you. Uh, God damn, I'm, I'm just my words are not my. The words are not coming out of my mouth like they're supposed to. I don't okay. know. Maybe I need to fix this. <laughs> are you okay? I don't know what's going on here. Hmm. Uh, welcome back, everybody. There you go. <laughs> one of these one of these shows we have to switch seats at the break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, just temporarily. Don't get don't get power oh, hungry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> like you pop on and people like, what? <laughs> What's going on? I got on the wrong show. What happened here? Oh my goodness. I hope everyone was able to empty their bladders and then refill their Look, I got Wawa tea. I got Wawa. I, I didn't I didn't show that. I was drinking out of my awesome Dr. Jim cup. Uh, but yeah, I was able to pour in the Wawa tea into do. the awesome yeah. cup. Mm -hmm. I drink from the skulls of my enemy. Boom. Ghost hunter. <laughs> Maybe it's Zach Baggins. I have been calling it Zach. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been calling the mug Zach. All right. So we got any more questions? All right. So Mike, Mike has a good question here, and I'm not exactly sure what he means, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a shot here. Have you ever tested film quality of the same scene being used as a bias? Um, like grainy video being suggestive, for instance. So I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean here. But I'm guessing, like, if someone has a film image of a scene to maybe go back and test it with, like, different speed film, different aperture, um, different shutter speed and stuff, and see what kind of details in the film might give clues. Because I do look at, like, grain. I look at noise, depending on, like, film or dig digital, um, and compare. Uh, and I also look at, like... Um, overall uh, 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 exposure time um, and then uh, ISO because I, if you have a higher ISO then you're gonna you're likely to have more grain in, in it uh, or showing up more noise showing up in, in the image so I'm not exactly sure what you mean here but um, if we're going with film quality and please if, if you can clarify in the comments I'm, I'm gonna keep looking over and checking the comments to see if you can clarify exactly what you mean um, but uh, most people that I know of that I deal with, this, many of the cases I, I deal with don't really use film anymore. But I do uh, look at the older cases. So, yeah, like uh, maybe if we're talking about the Snedeker case, the, the VHS uh, tape, that's why I used the, uh, the, the same kind of camera um, because I wanted to get that same quality, the same VHS shitty quality uh, to come across. Um, and I, comp I, I don't know about comparing it. I compared it... I did it in order to have the similar uh, camera uh, quality. So that's why I did it that way. Because um, I did use like my phone at, uh, at first and I was like, no, this looks like, you know, this is very clear. I can still pull it off really, really easy because, you know, the camera angle. But I wasn't sure. I wanted to get that, that exactness. Um, so when I am looking at, at film reproductions, I'm trying to look and see. I try first to get the same kind of camera or same kind of film and do it myself. Um, I do have an extensive camera collection, vintage camera collection from like 1903, I think is my earliest camera all the way up um, through digital and to today. So I have about 300 plus 350 cameras. Um, some of them still work uh, and, and I can use them when I need to, especially the Polaroids. I've used the Polaroids several times um, to recreate like the entity case. Um, there were several uh, photos from the entity case that were questionable at best, and I was able to recreate those. So, yeah, I, I, I'm I don't see your comments yet, but if you're here, if you're still here, and if you could clarify like a, a little bit, because I'm just I'm confused. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, unless I answered it and then just say, hey, you know, good job, you answered it, and I'll be like, yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to be <laughs> what's happening. Hmm. All right. What else? Melissa. Look at her. I got like she's doing magic. <laughs> when listening to things on repeat, how do you keep from distorting 
what you're listening to in your head. I hope that makes sense. Yes, I understand. I, I think this means like if you hear it over and over again and then you finally decide like, oh, I think I hear that, then you hear that over and over again. Like if you hear some static and you think you hear your name from then on, from that point on, you hear your name at that point um, because you're putting uh, uh, you're putting order to chaos. You're, you're assigning something to that, that little bit of chaos there. Um, so when I'm listening to it, uh, I'm trying to pick it out. Uh, I do it from different um, distances. Like I'll listen to it here. I'll, I'll put headphones on. I go out like uh, on the other side of the room and I listen to it. And then I also bring in people. So Eric behind the wall, I'll bring him in and let him listen to it. Uh, Nicole, one of our editors, I'll bring her down and ask her to li listen to it. Anyone that walks by my office, I'll drag them in <laughs> and listen to it. Um, sometimes I, I send it out to uh, Tim Vickers and Dave Schumacher, my my other uh, my three TS buddies, um, and see what they think. Uh, but there's always people that I'm looking for uh, to or trying to consult if I'm not sure. Uh, but like this, the example that I gave with the pet psychic, it was it was pretty clear. Um, there was another voice over her. So the, the owner of the horse was talking at the same time, but they had distinct voices. So I listened to it like two or three times just to make sure I got every word. Um, and then again, I did the same thing. I had Eric come in and he listened to it and he's like, did she just say like, it doesn't. And then she said it did <laughs> like, Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. So that's usually what I do. Um, if I'm if I'm going through and I still can't understand it and, and I'm having trouble, then I kind of just stop and walk away from it because I'm going to start. I know that I'll start just making something up in my head and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure. And and then I'll go through the other steps of, of sending it out to other people. So hope that answered your question. Yeah, that was good. Good question. Mm -hmm. Daniel Reed. What's up, buddy? Um, could you give us more about the backstory on the photos you posted today? The person who said they had lots of PhDs and scientists that verified their abilities. Oh my God. So that is a gentleman named Steve Huff, uh, H U F F, uh, Huff, Huff paranormal or something like that. And he has been doing alleged EVP sessions with a, it's, I don't even want to call it a spirit box. It's just like a, a, it's a Frankenstein of radio parts and guitar parts and stuff like that. And he claims that he gets um, pretty much every time a celebrity dies, he's like right there within an hour or so claiming that he is in contact with them and getting messages from them. And he used to use their actual voices, which was found out that he was using clips. Um, somebody actually investigated and, and was able to find and match one of the clips to his alleged uh, spirit communication. And I think ever since then, uh, he's been using like just random voices. So um, somebody tagged me in one of his TikTok videos. And it was funny because by the time I got there, he had responded to this person like five times saying like, you tag Kenny Biddle in this? Like, he's just a... he." he called me like a uh like a heart no he, he called me something what did he call me no, i now i gotta look it up <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't remember? i don't know but it was like a, almost like a compliment in disguise oh, you, took it you know way. like i took it that way because you know I, I i like taking it that way <laughs> i like taking it that way um good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rum starting to kick in Yay. All right. So let's see. He he started off by saying, oh, please, you're asking Kenny. He'll laugh at this. First of all, anyone could fake this work. So for him to recreate it would be no issue, no challenge for him. That tells you everything you need to know. If he like right off the bat tells you like it would be simple for for anyone, first of all, and then someone like me to recreate it then you need to do better, Steve. <laughs> you need to do better because if it's that easy to replicate, you're, you're not doing it good. 
Um, and then he continues. Uh, and second, he's a mega skeptic. No paranormal activity will pass the Biddle test. <laughs> I respect the man, but it's not worth it. <laughs> he respects me. I don't. I don't even know him. Like I know of him. But I don't. Uh, and then what else? There was. There was more. Uh, let's see. It's not even worth it. Um, just so you know. Oh, he said, and we'll answer any skeptics questions. I conduct mediumship readings without any information or feedback given to me in advance. It still wouldn't satisfy a skeptic, especially Biddle. Uh, just so you know, I've worked with institutes who have conducted blind cold experiments. I don't know what a blind cold experiment is. <laughs> I, I know what like single blind, double blind, and triple blind experiments are, but not cold blinded. What's a hot blinded? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, conducted blind cold experiments on me with amazing results. PhDs have studied my work with pretty strict protocols. Uh, and then he goes on and on and on. Maybe we should shoot him one of those challenge little clip things. Yeah. Um, so I, I asked, I asked, first I asked, like, who are these, uh, what institutions and what PhDs? Because um, I wanted to know. And then I found that uh, he had commented somewhere else, like on his website or something. It, it was there. So I said, never mind. I found it. But he started answering me um, and writing directly to me. Uh, like, again, like five or six times, like over and over again. Just telling me he's written articles, he's done this, he's done a video, and it's like, I don't care. This, this this is all stuff that you're just publishing on your own. Um, it's not peer reviewed. So I mean, if this is such a great process, if this is such a a, a, a paradigm shifting process, then it should be in some kind of peer reviewed journal. And and surprise, it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Uh, that's why I don't think his work legitimate. I think he exploits celebrities. Um, and I don't think he's a very honest person. So, uh, uh, he says he respects me, but to be honest, I don't respect him. I don't respect what he does. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't, I can't respect someone that exploits something like that. So, uh, but, uh, I am in, in the process. He is on the list. Um, so I'm going to be, he's on, the list. <laughs> He's on the list. <laughs> I should have something like I need a list that pops up yeah. now and be like, he is on the list. And then boing, there's a list here. Um, so I had the names of the, the PhD. I think it's only one PhD. Uh, and there's an institution that he claims that that tested him. There's two institutions. And I have started, I've, I've talked to a couple people. I'm not going to name who I, I, I spoke to with because, you know, we're going to start investigating. Um, well, the investigation's already on. I, I just have to catch up because other people are actually doing it. But uh, we're going to get into it. Uh, I'm just giving hints. Um, but I'm going to look into the institutions. I'm going to contact the people involved and, and say, like, what did you actually do? And what can you tell me? So we'll see. We'll see. We'll go from there. So there you go. That's all I'm going to say, Daniel. Oh, what else have we got? Did James Randi ever speak about the Warrens? Hmm. I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I think Randy, like, he, he took on... He took on a lot of bigger cases um, and, and just, I don't, I don't think so. I may be wrong. I, I definitely could be wrong, but I don't recall him talking about the Warrens. Uh, I don't remember reading in any of his books that he mentioned them. Um, Joe Nickel had a lot of interaction with, with, uh, with Ed. I know with Ed. So like, if you go look at that Sally, Jesse Raphael show, it, it's, what you see on that show, the interaction between them apparently continued backstage um, to the point where it almost came to like uh, fists. Um, so <laughs> I wish I could have been there. <laughs> that would have been so funny. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think Randy ever spoke of him. I I've never, 
I don't think I've ever recalled him talking about the Warrens. Um, so sorry, I don't, I don't have a better answer for you. I just, to the best of my knowledge, no. Um, but if I do, if I look into it a little bit more, cause I'm going to see like this Hans Holzer thing and stuff like that. So maybe I'll put it down and just verify Randy Warrens. You hear that? I have to say it like a question. Warrens? <laughs> It's because I have to write it down like I'm saying it. <laughs> All right. What else we got? Uh, JD is back. Have you seen The Devil on Trial, the Netflix doc about the case of Arnie Johnson? I have. Um, I've watched it uh, two or three times um, because once uh, Joe Nickel was actually supposed to be part of that. He was interviewed for it. Um, they flew him somewhere and sat him down, interviewed him, in, interviewed him for it but then cut him from the documentary because uh, apparently it was going to be too skeptical <laughs> if he was in it and they wanted a balanced film, which I don't, I don't think it was balanced. I mean, I think it made, made, Ar um, it made the kid look, uh, was it Arnie? Is it Arnie? I think, oh my gosh. Is Arnie the kid that claimed to be possessed? I got, I got all the, the, the family names mixed up in my head right now. Um, but I think it's Arnie Johnson that was the the kid that claimed to be possessed, or his family claimed to uh, have him possessed. I don't think he was. It's funny because the older brother, um, the older brother, no, David. Yes, thank you, um, David Glassell. Uh, he was okay. Arnie Johnson was the the kid that murdered the landlord, right? I think that's what it was. I'm getting the story mix, mixed up, but David. David was the kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Thanks, JD. Um, so Ar uh, David was the one that claimed to be possessed. Um, but even from that, that documentary, it wasn't convincing. Um, the, uh, the older brother, David and his older brother actually filed a lawsuit against the Warrens uh, years ago, claiming that the story wasn't true. And now it's funny to see like David, flip-flopping again you know maybe maybe it's money you know like oh maybe i can get paid for this yeah yeah it happened it, it was true uh horrible horrible that that it happened because i i mean there was a court case and i have the documents from the court case from them uh filing suit so i mean at one point david was like no this didn't happen that way so you know weird uh but uh the the Netflix documentary, it was, it wasn't good. I don't think it was good. Um, I mean, the, the older brother, the older brother coming on, I thought was interesting and I'm trying to get in touch with him. I have a connection and we're working on it. Um, but there's certain, certain things, legalities that have to be, uh, settled before I can actually talk to him or that he can talk to me. So I'm working on that. Uh, but yeah, I saw it because uh, Joe Joe Nickel came up. <laughs> I feel bad for Joe. He they gave him a copy of it. They gave him a DVD, but he couldn't watch it because he doesn't have a DVD player. He doesn't have anything to watch it. So he came up and he asked me about it, and I was like, "Yeah, come here." So I actually set him up here and put it in and let him watch it. And uh, I watched half of it with him, and uh, and then I then I watched it on my own, and then I uh, made copies so I could put it in my file. So. Yeah, I didn't think it was that great. All right. Yep. Tim Vickers, what's up, buddy? Uh, who's more dangerous? A person who fakes paranormal powers for money, notoriety, by helping people, or a person who believes they have paranormal po powers and try to help? Wait, huh? A person who fakes paranormal powers for money by helping people or a person who believes they have paranormal powers who's more dangerous ooh that's a that's a good one who's who's more dangerous the one who fakes it or the one who really believes it i would say the one who fakes it is more dangerous i mean you're both you're both doing the same thing. 
one is aware of what they're doing and does it anyway. One really believes that they're doing it and believe and, and does it because they think they believe they're helping. So who's more dangerous? Wow. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to side on the one who fakes it because and I'm going to try to work this out. This may be one where I, I switch sides. <laughs> I don't know yet, but I'm going to go with the idea that the person that fakes it is already being deceitful and they are willing to purposely purposely do this, purposely deceive people for money. So who knows how far they would go? Um, for instance, the Warrens. Uh, Ed Warren, like I, I think he knew exactly what he was doing and he pushed families that had problems with alcoholism, with drugs, with internal issues um, and exploited them to make money, to make a name for himself. So I, I think that's dangerous because they are willing to do whatever it takes to make something for themselves. I agree. Yeah, because someone who believes it you still have a chance of of maybe convincing them that they don't have these these superpowers um, or that it doesn't work. Um, or even if they realize and, and stay with me here, even if they they believe they have powers, they don't have powers, but they try to help and it's not helping. I think the person that would believe in it would realize that they're not helping and maybe stop or at least maybe try to get them some other help. That's the hope that I would have. Um, so yeah, I, I think option one, <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's it. So that was good. That was a good brain exercise. Like, all right, who, who is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, that was a good question. I agree, Beth. That was a good question. All right. Red Man, has Eric behind the wall gone on a ghost hunt yet? No, he has not. <laughs> um, I, 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 I haven't had any come up yet um, that I, I was able to take him with, with me. Uh, I did. Well, I, I didn't do a ghost hunt, but I did visit that uh, Vampa Museum, the Vampire and Paranormal museum i did that last weekend that's where i was I, I i i don't think i mentioned that like um i hinted two weeks ago that i was going to a secret location and so i went to this uh, museum in doylestown pennsylvania to check it out because they were making some claims and um so i was there doing that but that wasn't a ghost hunt per se that was more of a a more in-depth kind of investigation uh i do have another what you would consider a ghost hunt i'm going to a haunted house in like two weeks um, out of state. So that's also an invitation only. So I can't bring him on that, but we're going to try, we're going to get him out. Cause I know he wants to, he wants to go out on one of these and I just need a place that's close by and cheap uh, <laughs> that we can go because you know, Ooh, mm -hmm. um, da -dum, da -da -dum, da. Uh, so we just have to, we have to figure it out. So one of these days, I mean, maybe, Maybe if there's a, a like an event that's a reasonably priced event, maybe at like the Hinsdale House, but that that's not that far. Um, we can go out there and and hang out for a few hours and see what's going on, because I think it would be really interesting. He would be fascinated. He loves this kind of stuff, like the way people think, why they believe what they believe. He loves getting into the the philosophy of it. So, yeah. All right. Ooh, excuse me. Jade Kitten, surely already asked, but had to step away. Have you seen the new Ghostbusters? No, I have not yet. Tomorrow. We are going tomorrow. We're going tomorrow. We're going tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go see it tomorrow. There's a theater right around the corner. This is uh, <laughs> it's so nice. It's not far. It's literally like a two-minute drive. Walk. We could walk there if we want, but it's too freaking cold. It's, cold it's going to be snowing. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see it tomorrow, and uh, I hope it's 
Yeah, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not. I don't believe in jinxes or anything like that. But I'm not going to jinx it. I hope that I enjoy it. That's all I care about. As long as I enjoy it, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, that's that's fine. All right. What else we got? Da, 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 da. Booberry. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Kenny, have you heard of Chad Kalik? He's one of the few investigators I feel doesn't fake things. If you know who he is, what do you think of him? He has a podcast too. Chad, let me see. I'm going to look him up real quick because it does not um, come to mind. Like, I don't, that name just doesn't uh, tell me anything. So, uh, is that, is that Ryan Buell? It is. The first picture came up. I don't know if this is him. I'm gonna I'm gonna share the screen so that you can uh, you can see. But the first picture came up, and it looks like uh, he's with Ryan Buell. Is that who you're talking about? This guy I know. I don't like him at all. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if that's that's who you're talking about. It doesn't look familiar. Let's see. Director, producer, writer. Chad Kalak is known for Sir No... Oh, wait, Sir No Face? I think I remember this. Was this on, like, they went to, like, a an island or, like, a like a like like some kind of structure? Oh, I think it was an island or a lighthouse or something. Um, PRS. Ah. Uh, I think that I think Sir No Face I saw. I think I watched it and I just didn't like it at all. Um if that's what I'm if that's so if that's it is is that what it is? let me see. What's it say? Let's look at this. Sir No Face. Uh award winning film uh, just tell me what it is. Tell me tell me what it is. Damn it. In Island of Australia. Okay. In Sydney's harbor, uh, Cockatoo Island, the mysterious circumstances surrounding the only known paranormal investigation in history to be officially sanctioned by the Australian government. Yes, I did see this. Um, uh, I, I, I saw it, and honestly, the the clip that they show, I laughed. I mean, I, I when I first saw it, I was like, <laughs> come on now. Come on. Um, I don't think it was good at all. Whether it was faked or not, I don't know. Um, I, I really didn't look into it that much after that because I just couldn't take it seriously after I saw the clip. I thought it was kind of kind of silly um, that they were interpreting whatever they saw as as a ghost um, or whatever they were saying it was. I don't think it was what they said it was. Um, all right, let me get that off. Uh, so I, I I do not know him. Um, so I don't want to say anything like too bad. I, I just didn't like the film. I didn't think it was, uh, I thought it was just a typical ghost hunt. That was pretty much it. So I don't want to say anything else because I don't want to just trash talk, uh, somebody that I don't know. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. And, and when it comes to faking, like there, there are a lot of people that fake alleged evidence, you know, so it looks really good and for the drama and for the views and clicks and all that stuff. But not everyone fakes. Um, I think a lot of people make mistakes. I think they misinterpret. Uh, they don't have enough information, so they make assumptions. Um, I think that's the majority of it, at least when it comes with, with stuff like this. Um, you get into TikTok, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's whole channels dedicated to just really bad magic tricks that are passed off as as paranormal. Um, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 there's not much more I can say about that. I'm sorry. I can't answer your question anymore. I just don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to give an opinion, uh, when I don't know what I'm talking about. So follow up. He actually didn't get the evidence, but had it checked out by tons of people who said it wasn't faked. Yeah. So it, it might not have been faked. Um, and in fate, like, what does that mean? Um, like, what does that mean? Like that it was. Cause that can mean a different couple different things. Uh, like, was it edited? Like if you send it to an editor, you know, a video editor or a special effects editor, like they might say like, no, I don't see anything. I don't see any telltale signs 
of editing or anything like that. Um, ooh, a good YouTube series, The Quarter Crew. That's really good. I love watching them because they sit and they pick apart movies and, and tell you about the special effects and they're special effects experts. And it's really fun watching them. I really need to get them on the show. I would love to get them on the show and just talk to them, talk shop all day because I could, I could be schooled a lot by them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, fake could mean editing, but fake could also mean somebody was back there. You know, somebody was like in the doorway because I think it was like through two doorways or something that I'm remembering. And it was just something that kind of showed up really quick. Um, I'd have to look at it again. Um, but, I mean, how do we know somebody wasn't back there? And how do you say that that's not fake? Um, that's really hard to do if you're not actually on scene and be able to uh, like investigate the entire area um, or the whole scene where it happened. Um, so that's I have a issue with that. And again, I don't know what information there is on it, and I'm not coming at you, Booberry, at at all. I'm just I'm thinking out loud. Um, so there is there. I mean, there's ways to to fake evidence um, that would would be hard for anyone to say otherwise. Uh, yes, two doorways. The second movie goes into more detail. I might. So if I if I can pick it up or if I can pick out the uh, what's the second one? Let's see. What's the second one? Two face the gray. Is that aliens? It's, it's uh, first we have no or or sir no face and then the second one is two like spelled the number two two face the gray Both are on YouTube. okay awesome thank you then i'll be able to uh let me see i'll break that down too two face that's just funny like two <laughs> second movie <laughs> and that it's a gray alien the gray oh my god um, let's see. Answer no face. So I'm going to, I have some homework to do this weekend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll, t I'll take it and uh, I'll take a look at it again and maybe I'll, I'll try and report on that next, next week. And, uh, that'll be something to look into. Let's see, Daniel, and they could cherry pick the folks they report to say it wasn't faked four out of five. Yeah. I mean, and there's also, uh, there's something I noticed like, um, like uh, what was that other other film, The House in Between, where they interview like uh, a few scientists, but it honestly the scientists really don't have anything to do with the uh, with the alleged activity that they record it. It really has nothing to do with the with the scientists' expertise, um, because it, I mean when you, know, you don't have to get into like full blown physics and and chemical analysis and all this when it's there's simple magic tricks going on um and it, in that film the house in between i think that it was simple tricks that were being used um simple things i'm not uh not not let me, let me let me rephrase that because that sounds like it's deliberate hoaxing i think one trick in that film there was a baseball that was a trick that was a deliberately set up to have it fall and and i have have ideas on it. I have actually recreated that several times. Um, and I just haven't put that video out. Um, but then like the, the chandelier in that film with it going out, that's likely a wiring pro problem. And the electrician on there just did a shitty job, um, really shitty job. And then the thing with the door opening at the end, um, that's called air pressure. Uh, and, uh, I mean that, that's just a natural explanation. And it was convenient that they didn't have a camera going that way. Hmm. Um, but yeah, for this, I'll take a look at it and I'll try to report on it next week. So good question, though. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right. We have more. Yeah. How does Joe Nichols spend his time now that he's retired? Well, Richard. Uh... Oh, look, I, I, I got back in my old habit. Like I just grabbed the jug. I'm like, yeah. Um, so Joe is semi-retired. He still freelances for us. Um, so he does have an article usually in each issue of Skeptical Inquirer. Um, but he spends his time reading a lot uh, and focusing on much older cases. So he's going back and looking at cases that um, either ha 
had an explanation assigned to it where, where somebody, you know, they, the uh, one or two people think that they solved the case. He's going back and looking at them again and giving his own take on it, or he's tackling cases that have yet to be solved and he's giving his take on those as well. So, um, slowing down, he, he doesn't do much more than about one article, uh, for an issue. So every three months he puts out an article and he comes up here. Um, actually I haven't seen him in, in a little bit. So I'm going to have to call him, see how he's doing, check up on him. But he usually comes up like every three weeks or so and, and sits down, talks to me for a while. We, uh, he tells me stories. I tell him what I'm up to. And then, uh, then he goes and has lunch and that's it. So, um, but yeah, I haven't seen him for, couple weeks now yeah yeah he's he's due to show up and uh hang out for a little bit see what i'm up to maybe after the snow melts yeah probably i know he doesn't drive a lot anymore so he's he's pretty limited with what he's does what he does and with the snow yeah i'm sure he's not out in the in this kind of weather yeah, it's been snowing all week here so yeah, I don't drive during the week either <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't drive anymore i don't i hardly drive it's like, oh, I might drive to get a cheeseburger <laughs> or tacos. And then, like, it's either a 10-minute drive or it's a it's like six-hour drive. Right. It's, it's like the extremes. So, oh, cool. All right. What else we got? Are you going to Riverworks to see Chelsea Gill? Ah, so I saw that. Somebody sent me that. Uh, oh, you did, Amy. <laughs> I just noticed it was you. Um, so I, I, there's nothing up. I, the, what you sent me there was a uh, like a coming soon uh, advertisement. So it didn't actually give me any prices or anything like that. And uh, I don't think it had dates on it. Did it have dates? I have to check because I don't think it had a date because I, I was going to look it up. I did reach out to the river works because to be honest i don't know i didn't know who chelsea gill uh was i i still don't know who she is um but apparently well when i looked her up she's like into like reiki and and alternative stuff um i think i think let me make sure let me make sure I, i'm talking about the right person um because i look up a lot of people during the week <laughs> uh Oh, there it is. So, yes, the description here is Reverend Chelsea Gill is a ninth generation intuitive who realized her abilities at the age of seven as an empath. She was able to feel that her grandmother was going to be seriously hurt. And one week later, she was in a car accident. As Chelsea grew older, she started real to realize what abilities she was given. I, this is where I checked out <clears throat> um, because her abilities are clairvoyance, clair audience, Clara sentience, Clara sent, Clara agency. I don't know what the hell that is. And Clara empathy. She has all the Claras. Um, so, so yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what else she does. She, she plays a psychic medium or something. It, it was weird looking at this bio because she said she played the role of Mary Jane Carlo on Paranormal Lockdown. So, like, Paranormal Lockdown was a ghost hunting TV show. And according to this, like, would you take it that way? It actually says she played the role of Mary Jane Carlo. So, it, it looks like she was acting. I guess yeah, they do reenactments. They reenactment. Maybe maybe that's it. Yeah. Um, she played herself on Most Terrifying Places in America on Travel Channel. Well, I mean, Travel Channel. Uh, psychic medium for local hauntings and psychic medium on within these walls featured on Vidi space, V I D I space. I don't know what that is. So, yeah, I mean, I, uh, Cla <laughs> Clara Bell, <laughs> <He's left you. laughs> that's funny. Um, so yeah, I, I, I know she's going to be here at the waterworks or the river works are in, in Buffalo and it's not, it's not that far. We actually went there on the work retreat two years ago um that was a place we went it's, it's got like 
drinks and it's on the the canal i think um and it has like a it's almost like a uh a, a ben, not ben and, i was gonna say ben and jerry's the uh the adult arcade place down in philly that dave and busters, dave and busters. yeah it's it's kind of like that um but just on a smaller scale uh but yeah i'm, I'm gonna i did email or send a message to the Riverworks, and I, I mentioned that I was interested in it and who I am, and I would like to get involved somehow uh, to be like the voice of the other side. And so we'll see. We'll see. They have not responded to me, which I mean, not yet. Not, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Your skeptic wants to come in and ruin our psychic uh, uh, show? No, no, no. We're not going to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I I I see this bio, but I still really don't know who she is. I don't know what she. Well, I saw the picture. I know what she looks like, but I haven't seen her in anything. But I again, I really don't look at the ghost hunting shows. Um, <laughs> Clear Bell, Claire Bell, Cowbell <laughs> needs more Cowbell. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Um, I'm waiting for a response. Like I said, we'll see. Um, let me. See. Okay. I mean, that'll be, that'll be interesting. When did I send that? Let's see. Um, whiskey, Brian Dunning, Buffalo River Works. Two days ago, no, I sent it. So there was the automatic response said, thanks for contacting our social media team. We'll try to respond within 24 hours. We'll try. So, we'll try. so yeah, uh, we'll wait see. Till yeah. I'll wait till Monday. I mean, uh, I, I maybe I'll just drive down there. <laughs> <I'll go>, uh, <laughs> hey, I hear you're gonna have a psychic here. <laughs> I would like to do something. <laughs> I don't know what, but I would like to. Uh, okay. At Kenny Middle, don't hold Chad being friends with Ryan Buell against him. Seems like Ryan's come out of his drug induced. I, I don't. I'm not. I don't hold that against anyone. I mean, I I have pictures of myself with people that. I do not like, and it was just more for fun. Um, so I don't hold that against them. Uh, it was just funny that that's the first picture that that popped up on Google. Um, I just thought that was funny. Give me a chuckle. So a chuckle. <laughs> chuckle. Yes, I'm ready. Jay, what's up? Uh, what are the steps you take to de-escalate a situation where a believer is angry and could lead to violence? Especially in an election year, emotions will be very divisive. Conspiracy theories run amok. Ah. So to de-escalate a situation. So it depends on my alcohol content. <laughs> I, I want to put that disclaimer out there because I, I have I have pushed buttons that I should not have pushed. Uh, but usually I I I try to get a sense. I'll I try to keep a conversation civil. I try to keep it polite, professional. Um, I will listen to the other person and I will express my opinion. Um, and I, I do so without regret or, you know, like I think everyone is free to express their opinion uh, and, and me as well. So if you come to me and say, I believe in demons and they're real and they're everywhere and I see them all the time. I, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to say, oh, okay, I hear you, but you know, I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, but I'll be nice about it. <laughs> uh, but if it starts getting heated, usually I try to just, I, I realize it's going to get heated. I see they're getting frustrated. I see them, they're getting angry. And I either try to just say, Hey, you know, like let's relax. You know, I don't want to get into a fight here. Let's relax. If we're at a bar, I'll say, you know, let me buy you a beer. And, and we'll cool off. Let's talk about something else for now. Um, and, and maybe try to find common ground where we both agree on something and then work from there uh, and realize that, you know, we're not at odds for everything. Um, we do agree on some things and let's just kind of work from there. Or if I don't see, uh, if I don't see light at the end of the tunnel, then I, I'll just back away. You know, I, there's no reason to get into a heated argument where it might become violent. I, I see no reason for that um, over something like arguing about whether a ghost is real or not, um, or a demon uh, possesses a doll. 
um, you know, or aliens butt probed somebody. I'm not going to argue about this stuff uh, where it gets violent. It's just not worth it. So um, I'll either try to dis deescalate with politeness and professionalism and kindness, kill them with kindness, or I walk away. With that said, uh, there have been one or two times where uh, I've had too much of the captain in me and I don't back down. And what's really worse is when you don't back down and that you hit them with facts and you do it calmly. Uh, I find that that just pisses off an angry person even more. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> That's funny. Like, all of a sudden, the bust out laughing. Because it, it yeah. does. It really does. You know, like, they start getting mad and start yelling, like, what the fuck? And fuck this, man. You don't know what you're talking about. And, and I'll send there and be the like, well, you know, you know, like, we can discuss this as gentlemen. And we don't have to use the F-bombs. And then the... Don't tell me what the fuck to do. Blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, okay. I don't think I want to talk to you anymore, but I'm not leaving. So if you're going to stand here, I'll just listen to you yell at me. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I got a drink and I got a cool ass cup. Sometimes so he does that. Sometimes he gets heated too. Yeah. And then once in a while, yeah, I do push it over the edge. Yeah, okay. And be like, fuck me. No, no, no. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. Way. Okay. yeah. <laughs> and then escalate. Yeah. Escalate. Like, I don't know. You're mad, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you can go make love to yourself. Go fuck yourself. That's what I meant. <laughs> um, but in a nice way. So yeah, I mean, I, usually I try not to not to be that way, but you know, if you catch me, if we're at a party, because these have happened like social gatherings you yeah. know it wasn't during like a conference where you, you're behind a booth or you're on a panel um or yeah, engaging in something this afterwards. was afterwards just kind of hanging out having a couple beers with friends and talking and someone wants to come up and just you know because of because i'm the skeptical person they just want to come up the philly is strong with you yeah <laughs> that's right that's the philly comes out um but yeah, some people just want to start a fight and just because you're the skeptic, you know, and it's like you get a lot of, well, I did this. Prove me wrong. Go ahead. How do you how do you explain that skeptic? And, you know, that gets tiring after a while, you know, when it's the same person in your face, especially if they're in your face. I don't like it. So All right, we're moving on to the next question. Producers telling me to move. <laughs> Go. Come on. Let's get out of this. All right. Easy one. Did you see the trailer for the new Beetlejuice movie? I did. And it looks really <laughs> I good. I did. I was so happy. I was like, yeah. Because I've been watching it. Uh, I've been watching like the behind the scenes videos, people going to the town because they rebuilt the house um, on the hill there. And uh, they're changing like the, the, the local buildings back to what they were in the original film. So it's been cool. And it, seeing the first trailer, it was good. I liked it. The juice is loose. I like that. <laughs> that yeah. was that was a good line. Mm. And the uh, the the girl from uh, Wednesday, um, she played Wednesday Adams in the, the the series Wednesday. I think she's playing the daughter of uh, I can't forget. I can't remember her name. Um, the actress, the original daughter that was in the film, right? Yeah, I forget her name. Beetle Beetlejuice Beetlejuice film. Let's see. Uh, Winona Ryder. That's it. Yeah. She paid, uh, played Lydia. So, yeah, now oh, this is going to be good. I, I hope it's going to be good. I always say, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. And then, I yeah, I, I got to stop doing that because it's, it's been well, they, so many movies. movies. Yeah. They have nothing. They have no new ideas. So, oh, let's go back and redo an old one. That right. was brilliant. And let's try to make it right. a good movie, which... And it's hard to do. Like uh, Draco here says, I've seen that, but the big question is, will it be as good as the first? And and I think it's much harder when you have so such a big time gap. You know, like we were worried about Ghostbusters Afterlife and because when that came out, because it was so long after the original and it was supposed to be, you know, continuing the story. And I mean, it was okay. I, I enjoyed the movie. I didn't think it was as 
good as the first one. But like with this, it's the same con concept. Like it's been so long since the first uh, movie came out. That that was 1988. 1988 yeah. that came out. So such a long time. And uh, like, like, will it be the same? Will it have the same magic? I don't know. Will our expectations be way too high yeah. going in? Wow. And then we get disappointed because, you know, we didn't just go in fresh to, to just to enjoy the movie. So that's why I'm not reading any reviews about Ghostbusters. And, and I want to go in tomorrow and just enjoy it for myself, you know, see what it is and see if I like it for myself. So, all right, let's see. Yep. Jeff, what's up, Jeff? Jeff AF. Ever had your data twisted to make it evidence of haunting? My example was assisting a group and had a photo of a couch someone just got off of filled with many dust orbs in front of the camera. I submitted as furniture. Wait, I submitted as furniture was very dusty and as having dust orbs. The group leader submitted it to client as proof of many spirits changing my comment completely. Wow, that's that's a dick move. That's seriously, that sucks, dude. Has that ever happened to me? Or somebody, uh, I don't know. I don't, well, no, nothing like that. Nothing has been like that because I usually do not, um, I don't talk to like the, the uh, like a, like a, like a in between, like a, what is that called? Intermediate guy. Um, Kenny is the guy. I <laughs> I am the guy. I I talk directly. To, if it's a homeowner, I talk directly to them. I'm not, I don't go through a third party. Um, so like if a, even if a team comes to me and says, "Hey, you know, we want you to come out to this house," like that's cool. But I will talk directly to the owner. Um, I'm not going to give results to them because I mean, it, it, my investigation. I I'm the best one to convey the details of what I found. And what I interpret as it. And I like to explain that. I like to say, hey, I found this. This is what I think it is. This is why I think uh, it, it is what I say it is. Um, and give you all the details behind it. And I, I don't trust uh, a third party to do that. So I won't do that. Um, I'll go directly to the owner or of the, the house or the building or something like that. Um, and, uh, and, and do that way. Cause that's just, that's doing your dirt dirty, man. That that's just horrible that they did that. Um, that, that really sucks. I mean, I had, I've had people try to twist, um, things that I said around, but not like this, not, not like going completely opposite of what I said. Like you're submitting things and saying it's dust from the furniture and they turned around and said, it's, um, proof of of spirits going around but i've had people say like uh oh well you didn't check this or you didn't check that and therefore it's probably a still a ghost it's more conspiracy theory that i deal with where they try to twist certain facts or not like go the opposite way but try to twist it in their weird conspiracy way of saying well you're saying this but you're probably really mean this it, it gets complicated but i've had nothing like that um, so that that kind of sucks. Yeah, go directly to the owner yourself. Yeah, sorry that happened to you. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. Are we good? One more. We, one more. Hey, Beth, how do you feel about police using psychics in missing person cases? I am totally against it. Um, I'm totally against it. I've, I've worked too many cases where, um, after after somebody has claimed that they've done this, when I've talked to the police. They have told me straight up that no, the, the psychic did not help. Um, and uh, at most, what they did was uh, use up resources, as in take away time and, and, and people investigating it, uh, chasing leads that didn't pan out um, instead of doing actual police work. So I am totally against it. Uh, and, and I haven't come across a case where it actually did that. Um, where where a psychic has actually helped find the missing person cases. Um, it usually comes down to good detective work. Um, or in 
especially in the cases that I've done, any information was fed to the police from a psychic. It was because the police had already told the family who in turn told the psychic who in turn tried to tell the police that they came up with it themselves. Um, so that's the vicious cir circle that I've seen uh, the most frequent. So, yeah, I don't um, I don't I don't think that's a good idea at all. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we good? Yeah. That's it. Awesome. Okay. We made it. Look at that. Two hours. Damn. Yeah. Awesome. It was perfect timing, guys. That was good. Good job, guys. Yeah, you did it on time. Job. Donna's not going to be upset that we're here for an hour three. And <laughs> damn it, Bob's not in the house to, to keep Give cheering us on yeah. for, a, for a third hour. But all right. So with that, what what is coming up? I don't know, Penny. What is coming up? What is coming up? Let me see. So actually this Sunday, if you're in the Buffalo area, uh, we have a workshop um, here at CFI. We're doing pinhole cameras. Uh, this what Sunday, pinhole cameras, pinhole cameras uh, workshop, workshop starts at noon. Um, it'll be here. So basically you take a box and we have a bunch of cardboard boxes and we are going to turn them into these cameras where you cut out a little hole, you put aluminum foil over that hole. So it's only about like an inch square. Uh, you put aluminum foil on it and then you take a toothpick or a pin and you poke a hole in it. And then on the other side of the box, on the well, on the same side, but over here, uh, you cut an eyepiece out so you can actually look into it like, like that. See? Um, and what we're using this for, usually you put like film, like a, like a, a, a treated paper on the inside of it, and you put it outside, you uncover the pinhole, and you do a pinhole camera uh, uh, exposure, which means you leave it out there for hours or days usually days, and it, it creates an image on this the photo paper. But for us, we're, we are using these in um, preparation for the eclipse coming up on April 8th. And you can use these pinhole cameras to, when you have the sun behind you, you can use these, you get the light of the sun actually coming in, and it'll form a little uh, circle. It'll form an image of the sun on the back of the box that you can see. And when the eclipse starts, when the moon starts going in front of it, you'll be able to see the shape change in this. And it's a safe way to, to view the eclipse um, if you don't have glasses. Um, but we do have glasses. Yeah, we have yeah. tons of glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm so looking forward to that. This will be a fun project. I mean, it's, it's a good thing for photography. I'm looking forward to talking a little bit about it because I, I love, I think pinhole cameras are really, they're the simplest camera that you can make. And it just, it's, when you do it right, it makes really beautiful images. So we have that. And then what else we got? That's, whew. I have um, stuff coming up the first week of April. But if you're, if you're also in the area, there is a disc golf fundraiser that Eric Behind the Wall is sponsoring, or he's running it. Um, and it's sponsoring uh, CFI Western New York, which is a, a nonprofit. Um, and we're, they're going to go out and do prizes and stuff like that. I'll be out there all day. I'm going to put the link on uh, my Facebook page so you can see if you're, you're interested. And then uh, we have a busy week after that because Melanie Melanie is coming to visit. Mm -hmm. Melanie Teresa King and A.A. Ron yeah. and Randy are coming to visit because they'll be here for the eclipse. Um, you guys have seen both. Melanie and A.A. Ron have both been on the show. Um, so they're going to be up visiting us. April 8th is the eclipse. We're going to have a big event here. Registration has closed for that. Um, yeah, we because sold we out. sold out, we sold out. So it's going to be a fun day, fun day, uh, of just doing a lot of stuff. And then that's it for the foreseeable future right now. There's a couple of events that I'm, pin, I'm trying to lock down and see what else, but Hey, you know, if you're having a paranormal conference or a skeptical conference or whatever, or like an event like that, and you would like someone to come out and maybe do a talk, I'm available. Maybe. Let me know. Um, I'm willing to travel ish. Depends on where it is. Let me know. We can work out details, but I'm up for it. Uh, if you know someone that's holding a conference like that and you would like to, me to come out, let them know because uh, I see a lot of conferences happening now and I haven't been able to book anything because I've been so busy here, but I still want to go out and 
and hang out because it's it's fun. So with that, I think that's about it, right? We're yeah, good. So. We are good to go. You guys, thank you for hanging out with me. And, and Donna, thank you so much for spending your Friday night or if it's early Saturday morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you. for. I'm doing a live chat tomorrow at 7 p.m. If you want to pop on, I'd love it. Raw side paranormal. Ooh. Um, 7 p.m. tomorrow. We doing anything? Depends on the movie. Depends on the movie. Yeah. yeah it depends on what time we did. Shoot me a message. Was that on? That was on Facebook, right? Was that from no, Facebook? It no, was it was on YouTube. YouTube. Um, shoot me a email. Let me see. Do I have my email banner? Yes, I do. There you go. That's my email. If you shoot me an email with a link, um, and I'm available, I'll yeah, I'd love to jump on. That'd be fun. Um, see if we can talk shop. See what it's all about. But uh, otherwise, with that, I'm going to say good night, everyone, and have a great weekend. Be safe. And remember, never stop learning. See you later. Good night, guys.